Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Just one more hill and we are there. That is probably the most frequently used saying on a long mountain hike and probably also the one that is most likely to turn out to be untrue. Just one more hill and the destination is there. But when you climb that one hill, you realize that that hill is actually a false summit and it hides another bigger hill behind it. And then your heart sinks and you brace yourself for another climb and another one and another one. And if there is one too many, you eventually no longer want to look up. You rather just walk, putting one foot in front of the other. And slowly you get up the hill. And as you walk up, looking down on your feet, you end up seeing nothing but rocks and stone, stones and a bit of grass. As the vista unfolds in front of you, you see nothing, because your eyes are focused on the wrong point. And even when you finally reach the summit, you might not even realize it is there. That is, until you look up and see your destination. And you are there. Look up. That is what you sometimes need to hear when you are climbing a mountain. Because every mountain has a true summit, and eventually you will reach it. Even if there are many false summits along the way, look up. We read from Luke, Luke chapter 21, verse 25 to 33. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When, the, when they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Look up, for your salvation is near. What strange signs are you observing as you look around you? In every age, you will find strange signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And some esoteric and occult practices have actually made a pseudoscience of studying these signs. They call it astrology. And if you go deep enough down the rabbit hole that is astrology, you might very well imagine that you can see certain patterns. But scripture tells us not to delve into such things. Why though? There are at least two dangers I can think of with astrology. First question is, how do you know you are interpreting it right? Or that you are listening to the right interpreter? if there is even a right interpreter at all of these signs and the stars. Any first year journalism student will tell you, nine times out of 10, they give some junior journalist the job of writing the horoscope in the, news, in the newspaper or in the magazines. They don't actually have a genuine expert, they just give some journalist the job of writing that. And then many people read it and let that rule their lives. And then even if we try to use these signs in a Christian way to determine when Jesus might return, we are stumbling in the dark as we try to interpret them. Because every age has certain signs that people, even Christians, have interpreted to mean this or that. And inevitably, they were wrong. But now... Our text says, when you see these signs, it takes it at a given, as a given that these signs are there. Are we then meant to become astrologers after all? Are we supposed to ignore all the other warnings in Scripture after all and go down that rabbit hole in the hope 
that it becomes a wormhole into another dimension maybe? Let's take a closer look. Or maybe a closer three looks. I would like to suggest that there are at least three, maybe four directions we can look as we walk in expectation towards Jesus' return. And which one is the right one? That question we'll get to. But firstly, we can look down as we walk in expectation toward Jesus' return. Um, we can look down where our feet are, like in that example that I told you about the mountain climbing. We recognize the stone we might have otherwise tripped over, even the snake that might be basking in the pathway right there that we might step on. Yes, there are times when the danger is right in front of us when we are walking. And yes, at times it is important to look down. But when that is your only viewpoint, you never see the bigger picture. So, we are told to look up. We can also look halfway up. We can look around us and see the beautiful scenery, the thunderstorm in the distance that might threaten us, the clouds rolling in, the birds on the trees, or maybe a difficult or dangerously eroded section of the path that lies ahead. When talking about Jesus' return, we can compare that to looking around to both the positive things and the negative things that we see happening in the world. Our text speaks of strange signs, signs in the moon, the stars and the sun, and the sea being in turmoil. the ecological destruction caused by the destruction of creation. And that many will become afraid because of that. And that is certainly something that can happen and does happen. But in the second part of the text we read about that fig tree and that is quite telling in the positive sense about looking around halfway up. In dry areas, a fig tree will start bringing out leaves when the right season, in other words, spring, is coming, irrespective of whether the rain is there or not. There might be no other evidence that spring is coming, but in those dry areas you'll still see the fig tree sprouting leaves. And seeing this is like looking around in the positive sense, seeing people doing God's will, caring for the poor, being custodians of creation, working toward justice, and all these aspects that are part of God's kingdom. These are the signs of summer, if we stay with that picture of the fig tree, or the signs of God's kingdom that is near. But the signs around us, no matter how positive or how negative they are, and Jesus is quite realistic. He says, when you look around, yes, of course, you will see positive signs and negative signs. But don't get too focused on them. Because those are things that are happening there. And they're not supposed to draw our attention to the point where that is our primary preoccupation. The text says, when you see these signs, it doesn't say, look at those signs and see absolutely every detail you can see in those signs. It says, when you see these signs, look up. A third view that we could take is that we could look back at the progress that we've made and be thankful we are where we are. But looking back is also not without danger. Looking back too often can throw us off balance and make us stumble because we are not focusing on the way ahead. So the occasional looking back is okay and may help us to get some perspective. But constantly and exclusively looking back is dangerous, both in the physical sense, as a hiker, but also in the spiritual sense. Yes, 
We must celebrate our milestones and give God thanks for the path He has led us. But we cannot look back for too long or we lose our balance. So look up. We can look up. And that is the fourth direction we can look. And we can see the summit, the destination beckoning. And yes, even if there are false summits in between us and our destination, we know the real summit is there, ahead of us. And our text says, look up. So we look up. Because up where our goal, up is where our goal, our destination lies. For the hiker, the summit is the destination. For the believer, the destination is to be with Jesus. So does this now mean we must look up all the time and expect Jesus any minute? In a way, yes. Because we need to keep our eyes focused on where we are going and where Jesus is coming towards us. But once that is clear in our mind, as our main focus, the other perspectives also get their proper place. Looking down may be needed for a brief moment to attend to a danger right before our feet. And if our eyes are focused on Jesus, then surely the Holy Spirit will help us to look down when we need to. We don't need to look down all the time, just in case. But there may be moments where we briefly have to look down. Looking around us lets us see some positive and some dangerous signs. But focusing on Jesus will help us to recognize and interpret these signs in the right light. If we only look at the signs all the time, then we'll probably come up with some pretty interesting conclusions. And if we read in the volumes and volumes of church history that has been written, you'll find some crazy examples of people interpreting some signs of their times as something very definite that turned out to be completely wrong. So again, we look up, primarily we focus at Jesus, focus on Jesus. And from that viewpoint, we can then glance left and right and try to interpret what is happening to our left and to our right. Looking behind occasionally, does add to the picture, but only when we realize that what is behind us was only made possible by God in the first place. So first and foremost, let us look up, because our salvation is near. Amen.